We begin with Greg Best on Gem Twist. Greg is giving him a wind up here. The timers are a long way from the first jump, so you see the riders really start to gallop early. Taking a very tight turn there to fence number three. He's going to give him a little bit of time back to this in and out. Lisa, if he can go clean, of course, he would take over the lead regardless of the time. That's right. What he wants to do is to put enough pressure on the other riders going behind him that they make a mistake. So far, so good. And he also wrestles him back to attention at that 9AB. With one fence to go, he's got a clear round. Oh, what a ride. That was great. And Greg Best is clear on Gem Twist. Time of 48.6. And a very beatable time, but that clear round is the thing to shoot for. Here's the split time we see with Greg at 24.4 seconds at fence number 14. We'll be watching the other riders to see what time they reached fence number 14. Joe Fargis, the first of the two horses that he will have in the jump off. This is Mill Pearl. Fargis needs to be clear and beat 48.6. And Joe's in a very good position here. He has seen Lisa Turnipole be five seconds faster than Jim Twist with four faults. So he's going to try to go about two seconds or three seconds faster, thinking about the other horses to go behind him, but really thinking about the time he needs to beat the horse who's already put up the score. And he's quicker, I think he's quicker to this point than Jim Twist. Good ride. 23 seconds to that point. He's up on the time. Oh, that was a very quick turn on landing. Little rub there. Coming to the last, and he's clear. Well up on the time. Oh, great ride. And there is the new leader, Joe Farges and Mill Pearl. Of course in her red jacket and Kurzinski and Starman. And this big scopey horse with a very, very long stride can certainly turn on the speed this afternoon. I think right there you can see the beauty of the horse and the artistry of the rider as she gets set to get Starman moving. <laughs> Beat 44.5. With a big scopey horse like this, smoothness is all important, and Anne has really shown us that this afternoon. She's very smooth. About She's about two, two seconds, seconds behind. behind on the split time, however. You Starman's just bounding over these fences. Yeah, you're using the adjective scopey. Tell me what that means. To Scope you. means a lot of depth and a lot of strength, able to jump very high and very wide. And she is clear, but she won't catch Joe Farges. Slipping into third place with a clear round in 46.783. A very, very nice ride, but not quite fast enough to take over the lead. Into third place. Here is Joe Farges and touch of class. And of course, the Olympic selectors are here. He already is in first place with Mill Pearl. And now we'll see what he can do with Touch of Class, who might be his favorite, of course, if he gets into the Olympics. And Farges in a very enviable position. Yes, he is. But I think Joe, being the keen competitor that he is, will really give it give Touch of Class her best shot. He'd love to be in first and second place at the finish of this class. So I don't think that the class is over. I don't think necessarily that we've seen our winner. Farges with Mill Pearl was clear and the time of 44.5.
this talented veteran set to go with touch of class here at the Ox Ridge Hunt Club in Darien, Connecticut. This $30,000 1988 Cadillac U.S. Open jumping championship. And what a day it's been and what a capper it would be right now if he can finish ahead of his earlier performance with Mill Pearl. Well, it would be, Jay. You know, when you're going so fast, the speed that Joe must go to catch himself over these jumps so much must go right and so much can go wrong but joe being the master that he is and really wanting to go into the olympics with two very good shots is good look at him winding her up he's really going to give her a chance to win this class come on kitty seems to be having a very similar ride to his last horse, Mill Pearl. About almost exactly the same ride at his intermediate time. But that looked a good bit quicker to me. Getting your attention here for this combination. Whoa, he says. Oh, what a shame. And four faults. But look at that time. Very, very, two very close rides for Joe Fargus on his two horses. Well, and he's our winner on Mill Pearl earlier. The first horse in the jump off for Fargus, the only competitor here to have two in the jump off. He was clear and in a time of 44.5. Joe Fargus and Mill Pearl take down the 88 Cadillac U.S. Open Jumping Championship here in Darien. What an afternoon we've had here, Jay. We've seen some fine jumping, great determination, very, very difficult course, and very exciting jump off. Michelle, it was difficult beyond words, and it was extremely challenging. Our hat goes off to Steve Stevens, the course designer. It was a course that he wanted to bring up to Olympic toughness, and certainly this afternoon, Joe Fargis, the winner, and along with all the other competitors, they got a taste of what it's like at the top. They definitely did. Michelle, a big day for Joe Fargis, and down there at number five, Greg Best moving into the rider of the year standings on the top spot. Well, he did, Jay, and interestingly enough, all five of these top five finishers are very, very strong Olympic contenders, so they've really shown their presence a special day of competition. The Olympic selection trials involved in this 88 Cadillac U.S. Open Jumping Championship and a very interesting competition here in Darien. Our thanks to Michelle Grubb and Lisa Burke. This is Jay Randolph reminding you that the 88 Cadillac U.S. Open Jumping Championship has been brought to you by Michelob. Exceptionally smooth, distinctive. Taste is why the night belongs to Michelob and by the Cadillac Car Company. Discover why the only way to travel is Cadillac style. This has been a presentation of Bud Sports through the facilities of ESPN.